Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing your notes over sequences and series, and we're going to talk about geometric sequences in this video. So what is a geometric sequence? It is a sequence in which each term is found by multiplying whoops, the previous term by the same value. So we're going to be multiplying the previous term by the same value. So you might recall in an arithmetic sequence, we found the next term by adding the same amount every time, by adding that common difference. In a geometric sequence, you're going to be multiplying the previous term by the same number. So in an arithmetic or in a geometric sequence, sorry, here's an example. From 3 to 6, how do I get from 3 to 6? Well, I can add 6, but in this case, it's a geometric sequence. I'm multiplying by 2. 6 to 12, I'm multiplying by 2. 12 to 24, multiplying by 2. 24 to 48, I'm multiplying by 2 every single time. So if I take 48 and I multiply it by 2, that'll give me the next term in the sequence, which is 96. And then if I take that term and I multiply it by 2, I'll get 192. That's the next term in the sequence. So that number that we multiplied each previous term by, we call that the common ratio. So what is that? It's the ratio of a term to the previous term. And it's found by taking any term in the sequence and dividing by the previous term. So the common ratio, the ratio of a term to the previous term, and it's found by taking any term in a sequence and dividing by the previous term. So how do we find our common ratio? Well, if this is the first term in the sequence and this is the second term in the sequence, I can take that second term and I can divide it by the first term, and that's three. Or, for example, the fourth term in the sequence is 27, the third term is 9. I could take 27 and divide it by 9 and I still get that common ratio, which means each term is multiplied by 3 to get the next term. So you might recall in our previous notes what a recursive formula is. It's any formula that relies on the previous term to find the value of the next term. And then we talked about these crazy notations that a lot of students really struggle with in this particular um, lesson. So, so let's look at your notes over geometric sequences. Determine if the given sequences are geometric. If they are, identify the common ratio and find the next three terms. Number nine, 64 to negative 16, negative 16 to 4, 4 to negative 1. Am I multiplying by the same amount each time? You can always divide negative 16 divided by 64, and what do you get? You get negative 1 fourth. So I'm multiplying 64 by negative 1 fourth. And you'll notice negative 16 to 4, I'm also multiplying by negative 1 fourth. 4 to negative 1, I'm also multiplying by negative 1 fourth. Oh my gosh, that looks kind of ugly. So yes, this given sequence is geometric. My common ratio is 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. And then let's find the next three terms in the sequence. So negative 1 times negative 1 fourth, what is that? It's positive 1 fourth. Positive 1 fourth times negative 1 fourth is negative 1 sixteenth. Negative 1 sixteenth times 1 64th. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative 1 sixteenth times negative 1 fourth is 1 64th. Looking at number 10. 16 to 24, 24, 36, then 54. Okay, well, let's look at this r equals 24 divided by 16. That's 3 over 2. 
36 divided by 24 is also 3 over 2. 54 divided by 36 is also 3 over 2. Yes, this is a geometric sequence. My common ratio is 3 over 2. That's also 1.5. Some students are decimal students. Some students are fraction students. Same number. So to find the next three terms in the sequence, I need to multiply the previous term by 1.5 or 3 over 2. So 54 times 1.5, that's 81. 81 times 1.5, that's 121.5. 121.5 times 1.5 is 182.25. Let's move on to number 11. 1, 4, 16, and 64. I want you to pause the video and see if you can find your common ratio. So could you find your common ratio? What are you multiplying each previous term by to get the next term? By four. So my common ratio is four. One times four is four. Four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. Yes, this is a geometric sequence. My common ratio is four. How do I find the next three terms? Multiply each term by four. So what is 64 times four? That's 256. What's 256 times four? 1,024. What's 1,024 times four? 4,096. I'm gonna put semicolons there so you can see. It's kind of a lot of commas. Let's move on to number 12. One third, two thirds, four thirds, eight thirds. Okay, well, you can always find your common ratio by taking each term or, and dividing it by the previous term. So two thirds divided by one third, you can always plug it into your calculator, but remember, keep change flip, two thirds times three over one, well, that's just two. Okay, so, and actually, if you do that with every single term, you'll find that yes, this is a geometric sequence, and my common ratio is two between every single one of them. So how do I find the next three terms in the sequence? Well, what's eight thirds times two? 16 thirds. What's 16 thirds times two? It's 32 thirds. What's 32 thirds times two? That's 64 thirds, and we're just gonna leave it as improper fractions because it's upper level math and it's totally okay to do that. Love it. So how do we find the nth term of a geometric sequence? We're gonna use this formula right here. So we still have a sub n, n being the term number, so the value of that term, a sub one, we still have the first term, except we have this r here. Remember, r is a common ratio and we're gonna raise it to the power of the previous term number, because that's n minus one. Remember n minus one, that's just the previous term number. Okay, so write an explicit formula for the given geometric sequence, then find a sub 12. Okay, so I've got my formula right here, and I'm still gonna, it looks like I'm still gonna need the value of the first term, just like we did for arithmetic sequences. But now, instead of a common difference, I need to identify my common ratio. So in number 13, the value of the first term is three, and my common ratio, can you figure out what this common ratio is? What are you doing to each term to get to the next term? We're multiplying by two, so that's my common ratio. So my formula is gonna be a sub n equals, what's the first term? Three times, and I'm not gonna put a little dot there, I'm just gonna do this right here. What's the common ratio? Two raised to the power of n minus one, and that's my formula. That's it. So now we need to find a sub 12. Well, a sub 12 is gonna be three times two to the power of 12 minus one. Well, that's three times two to the power of 11. And you can actually plug this into your calculator. 
all at once. I actually plug 2 to the power of 11 first, which is 2048. And then 2048 times 3, what is that? 6,144. A sub 12 is 6,144. Moving on to number 14. So we're going to write a formula, which means I'm going to need the value of the first term and the common ratio. What's the value of the first term? It's 2. And what's my common ratio? Can you see it? If you need to pause this video to try to find the common ratio, I would suggest doing that now. Your common ratio is 3. So now let's plug it into our formula. A sub n equals value of the first term, 2 times common ratio is 3 to the power of n minus 1. And that's my formula. That's it. So now let's find a sub 12. a sub 12 equals 2 times 3 to the power of 12 minus 1. And you can actually plug this in just as you see it. I'm going to simplify it a little more. So 2 times 3 to the power of 11, 3 to the power of 11 is 177,147. And when I take that and I multiply it by 2, I get a sub 12, which is 354,294. Lovely. Moving on. Number 15. Last two problems. Let's see if we can move through these kind of quickly. So I'm writing the formula, the recursive formula. I need the value of the first term and my common ratio. And I know I'm looking for a common ratio because you were given that is a geometric sequence. So what's the value of the first term? Negative 11. And what's my common ratio? Looks like I'm multiplying by 2 each time, but what do you notice? Is it going to be a positive 2 or is it going to be a negative 2? It's going to be a negative 2. And you know what? I'm going to make this so you can see that formula right there. Okay, so a sub n equals value of the first term, negative 11 times the common difference, which is negative 2 raised to the power of n minus 1. Boom, shakalaka, we're done. Now let's find a sub 12. a sub 12 equals, well, I'm just going to plug in 12 for n. And I want you to pause the video and see if you can find what a sub 12 is. Go ahead and do that now. You should have gotten a sub 12 equals 22,528. Let's move on to number 16. Number 16, I'm writing a recursive formula. I need the value of the first term and I need the common ratio. First term is 1. What's that common ratio? What am I multiplying each previous term by to get the next term? Negative 3. If it doesn't just jump out at you, you can always do your division. Just make sure you do it for every single term. So let's write our formula. a sub n equals the value of the first term, which is 1, times my common ratio, which is negative 3, to the power of n minus 1. There's my formula, and if you want to pause the video and go ahead and solve for a sub 12, I would suggest doing that now. 1 times negative 3 to the power of 12 minus 1. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find what a sub 12 is. You should have gotten that a sub 12 is negative 177,000. 147, and that concludes your notes over geometric sequences.